Hey. Hey. Team UK again in India. I like checking their email. How are you guys doing? Not bad. Just done the first presentation. You went, did? How did it go? Yeah, it went pretty well, I think. Good. What do you think of India? It's really good. Really hot. Yeah. <laughs> Melting. Are you still jet lagged? Uh, no. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Any glitches yet or what? No glitches at all. A bit slow starting up because they had to find a missing judge, but we finished on bang on time, so presentation went smoothly. Excellent. So I didn't ask you this last time we talked, but I wanted to ask a very broad question about what you guys are dreaming. Yeah. What, what motivates you here? What's going on? I think what motivates us is we spent time in hospital, we spent time with doctors and you know, saw some of their friends and family and patients in hospital. What motivates us is trying to improve and impact and make a benefit to their life, you know, really improve that because we spent time in intensive care wards and it's really, really harsh place, a really tough times for people. And you know, to think you can change that even a little bit is a huge thing. So that's what we're hoping for. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, wide open are. questions? It's good. It's pretty, it is the friends and family and help what you can do for them, but the patients, I mean, the suffering so much and it's a horrible thing to see, especially when we were going around and it really touches you to think we could actually help these people. Excellent. Well, I don't think you guys will. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, uh, we're planning on taking it on even after the Imagine Cup, so whatever happens, we'll hopefully be able to help these people. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I want to. I'll keep. I want to actually dig into what you guys built at some point. I don't know whenever you're comfortable yeah. in doing that. Well, that's cool with us. And uh, let's 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 get geeky. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Uh, all right. Enough. Of the, enough of the personal story. <laughs> enough of the people. Let's get technical. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Jeff. Hey man, so what are you doing here? What's going on? I just came from the drive from Agra. Yeah? How was it? <laughs> that was fun. It was fun? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of India so far? It's amazing. Amazing country, amazing people. Yeah? Um, really excited to be here. You psyched about the tournament? Can't wait to see what people do. Totally. There's a lot of interesting things going on here. This is a pretty nice hotel, too. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful. Yeah. More students. It's from Germany. I interviewed them in uh, Seattle. He's, he's carrying an ultra mobile PC. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, their 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 uh, application is really cool. All right, Jeff. Have a good day. See you, man. Take it easy. All right. Let's go check out Project Rishimi. How are you doing?
Ne, 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 kicking off teams are starting to leave to go do some it's a short film yeah the shoots they're going to do the uh, interface design teams are actually doing it some people are storyboarding so we're trying to get the I think one of the teams is looking for logos now and who are you again? I'm Scott Sweeney I'm All right. Magic Update excellent well great job this is a lot of fun oh yeah absolutely I'm going to keep on going around see ya He wants to shoot. He wants to shoot generally with the man. He wants to. He wants to use the majority of his shots with that. It's that camp shoots back. Hi. Hello. I'm Putin. 
students come from Hong Kong. Hong Kong? And, uh, we are grade 10 students, uh, about 16 years old in our team. Mm -hmm. this, uh, our project is Bluetooth Critical Zone Control System, which is an automatic disinfection system um, in order to prevent avian influenza. And this mm. is our wow. model. Okay. This is our model. Uh, we are use this uh, this function in the uh, critical zone. Uh, for example, is laboratory and bat uh, battery. Wow. Oh. And this uh, our smartphone. The staff just use the smartphone to log into the critical zone. Uh -huh. the, the smartphone has our program. We write some program in the smartphone. Then the staff should open our program to log into the uh, critical zone. And when he enter the critical zone. The disinfection room will uh, provide a whole body disinfection. Then the staff can enter the critical zone to uh, have it work. When uh, the critical zone has nobody inside, uh -huh. it, uh, it has a disinfection to the whole uh, critical zone. Wow. Oh, yes. And, and when he uh, has a fire, then the critical uh, the staff can open a uh, vocal command to open our uh, program to. Uh, to uh, open the visa to uh, stand as to uh, open the visa, then the staff can uh, go out to safety. Excellent. So this is something that will help prevent avian flu, if I understand you correctly, right? Yes. Interesting. So uh, who are introduce yourselves? Who are you? Uh, I am. I am. <laughs> I am the team member of the blue team. Excellent. I'm the Kok Wing Chong. Nice to meet you. I'm Kok Yi Lok. He's All the right. leader in our team. He's the leader. You're the yes. team leader, huh? Yes. Excellent. I'm just the Amanda. I'm the man. The, the, the teacher in the, in the high school. Yeah. Excellent. So this is your all high school students? Yes. 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 Wow. That's incredible. So what... What's the, the the vision behind this project? What made you decide to focus on this? If you want to translate, that's fine too. Nowadays, the world is invaded by many infectious diseases, uh -huh. um, causing the death of death of millions of people. So it, we believe that our system can help the world to face again the infectious disease. Okay, excellent, absolutely. Well, good luck to you in the competition. Thank you. Very cool. High school. Wow. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Okay. Bye bye. See you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Hey, how are you doing? Fine. So, uh, this is Team Saudi Arabia. What are you guys, uh, how are you doing? Uh, we are doing uh, automated disease detection and identification system uh -huh. using sound. Using sound? Using sound, okay. Uh, we used an idea by a research in Philips in the Netherlands. It's called uh, JAP Hitima. Okay. That can identify uh, sound objects using Fourier transform and uh, uh, energy differencing between the window. I explain the detail in the presentation. Sure. Okay. Uh, we use that uh, an external device called MBLDV to collect sound uh, features for the for the diseases, mm -hmm. and then we can use this uh, uh, this feature to identify that disease. So, uh, for blood samples, we can uh, just uh, use this 
identification information to know what are the disease contained in this uh, in this blood. Amazing, using sound. Using sound. Excellent. Sound. Now, what's the benefit of using sound over just traditional chemistry? Well, it's just something new. Something could be cheaper. Excellent. Yeah. So, what's the vision behind your project? What What led you to to do this project, design that, this solution? Mm, actually, I was uh, doing it uh, in my CN project using uh -huh. sound for uh, audio clips. Uh -huh. Then I found that extending it to 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 be in the theme of Imagine Cup, that's uh, heal, uh, health. Uh -huh. uh, it will be beneficial and it works. Sure. And we were uh, like chosen among uh, Saudi teams. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to you. Okay. Thank you very nice much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Me too. Take care. Okay. All right, so uh, sure you are. Who are you? I'm Spiros Proxinus. I'm one of the mentors from South Africa. Okay. On the Team South Africa. Excellent. And um, we're just very enthusiastic about what Microsoft is doing in education. Um, personally, myself, I'm involved in all the educational uh, primary schools and high schools leading up to university level uh -huh. and um, involved in the development of the Team South Africa team. Uh, I'm one of their sponsors as well as a mentor for the team okay. and it's incredible to see what, it, what, what is being done and the level that is actually being produced by these students which is fantastic and uh, it is the future Absolutely. and uh, it is phenomenal what Microsoft has done and the encouragement which they've been given to continue developing and that is, that is very important Excellent. and we wish that that will just continue. So let me ask you this because I haven't really gotten this perspective yet. So as a mentor how do you go about picking your team? How do you figure out which participants to choose from the pool of computer science students? Well, that is eliminated um, part of their third year project. Okay. The, um, all the students at the university present a third year project as part of their third year um, tuition. The university then select the best two teams out of their own uh, learners. They had 47 teams of five learners at that particular time and they thin that out to, to the winning two teams. Locally within South Africa those two teams are then sent to the nationals and they compete against all the top two teams countrywide throughout South Africa. Fantastic. And Team South Africa which has now been put together is the top team, the top university from South Africa which is now representing Microsoft South Africa at this event Imagine Cup. Fantastic. So in many in many senses, it's kind of like the World Cup. Of it football, is. It, it, it's right? kind of like the World your, Cup. These are representing your country for absolutely uh, developing software. Would you like to join me? This sure. is Dean Proxinus. He's one ah, of the how are you doing? Baratin you. contestants. Good. Yes, great. Nice outfit. Thanks. <laughs> this is one of our sponsors. Uh, it's one of the largest independent uh, emergency systems within our country, mm -hmm. um, which is very similar to the project which we are doing at the moment, but we are pitching the project more to governmental organizations and to be a total solution for a country, not just a private organization. Welcome, Ross. Would you like to join in? How are you doing, Ross? And I'll let you guys take over from here. Cool. So let me, before we t take over, I want to turn off the IES system on here. Okay. Because what it's going to do... Well, those suits like kicked off the IES system. No, I'm okay. just kidding. It basically it's it's automatic adjustment to movement, okay. but I don't want to have it on, so I'm gonna. All right. Right, we're back. I Would you have like this to configured come stand now. Here now. I have that in the background. Sure, <laughs> but I you know I really want to talk to you guys about what you what you've built and okay. talk about a little bit about why you built it and what's the vision behind it. Well, we initially identified that the problem in South Africa is the lack of efficient emergency response. A couple of mates of ours were in an accident and the one mate went to a hospital completely separate to other friends and no one could find him. And we started digging in a bit deeper and we realized that um, the government says that there should be a 15 minute emergency response time, but the average at the moment is nearly two hours. Wow. So there is a definite need for a system like ours, which is the emergency uh, response control and monitoring system where we'll be able to monitor the countrywide uh, emergency problems all from one emergency console. Excellent. So with the, the, the leaders in the country will have complete control of exactly where their vehicles are, who they're helping, bringing in information from all sources together helping people. So we created this solution which is countrywide deployable. 
can take it as it is now and you can go put it in the whole country, wow. put it in the vehicles and they'll be able to run. The unit we got over here is a physical unit which will be going into the vehicle. It's not an emulator. Mm -hmm. You can actually take it and put it in the vehicle right now and it will track and monitor you and we'll be able to see it right from here. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's really a full deployable solution. We're using wireless and GPRS. Okay. Um, the GPRS can be replaced with any mobile communication system, mm. 3G, HSDPA, anything you want to be a mobile communications medium. We chose GPRS because it's so cheap right now in our country, because we want to be the most cost effective. Sure. Because we don't want to have the huge cost going through the system. So we are able now to communicate with both. Mm. So when the vehicles are coming, approaching the yard, mm -hmm. they are able to switch over to the wireless transmit their GPS logs and things like that over the wireless which is obviously free mm. so therefore we form in, we're making cost effectiveness so now what we've also we've developed this vehicle unit to be like clear and concise you know you don't want the vehicle drivers to sit there and, uh, uh, what button must I push what 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 sure. when so they do it all from one clean and clear console which is laid out in a specific way we liaison with people laying out the console so they will know exactly how to use the system Ross will take you through more of the call center how cool. that works that's well, just fun. to extend on Dean's comments as well about South Africa sure. and, and the need for the system, is in 2010 we're hosting the uh, Soccer World Cup, as oh. many people might know. All which, right. And which is another reason why we decided to go this route of emergency management, because all systems in South Africa are basically going to need an upgrade. So there's, a, there's an obvious market for that. And just uh -huh. to take you through some of our... Um, architecture, yes, we, we've please. got our own, okay, we, we developed a server, that we call them departmental servers, right? Okay. So what this does is monitor, it, it serves as a platform for all the uh, vehicles who connect to, so then we can manage all the communication. So a call center will connect to us to a departmental server and be able to communicate with any of those vehicles um, logged onto that server. So we can track them in real time, send information in real time, update emergencies in real time. Uh, basically, and then they will then capture all the information and log it when applicable. So sure. we eliminate our central point of failure by separating the, the actual departmental service from the databases themselves. Mm. So we can store all the stuff locally until they are able to update, send all this, the information to the DB providers, which we call which is database provider. Sure. And then we can report from this information that we've collected throughout the system, basically, at a high admin level through the website uh, cool. web interface. So are you using... Uh Web services? Yes, we're using web services to manage all the data. So basically, we've got a SQL Server 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, we connect to that via our web service. So that's sort of the access point to that. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call CSA providers, which is communication server address providers. So it provides all the synchronization data uh, throughout the system to all the vehicles, all the call centers. So they know where, where they all are based on the TCP IP uh, sort of architecture. You know? So you need an IP and a port number. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so the, and, and those two, yes, that's a diagram. Can we look at that? Sure. Very cool. And so for the client that you've written, uh, it's also managed? Yes, no, all our code's done in the .NET Framework version 2. Okay. Yeah. How was that it's experience? Did you like uh, it? It's awesome. I mean, yeah. you can develop, it's, an, it's crazy, you can develop anything in a matter of weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all days in some instances. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, also from the vehicle unit side now, uh -huh. the, the system consists of a PDA, which we were sponsored Great. from Leaf Wireless, which we are able to communicate here. Yeah, it's just a normal jam, and I made jamming, mm -hmm. which we are able to connect to our vehicle unit, the vehicle team inside the vehicle unit. Instead of having to run back into the vehicle when they're attending a patient, they are able to connect to the vehicle unit using the PDA, uh, um, ask for additional assistance, mm -hmm. helicopter support, uh, uh, instant messaging because the system provides communications mm -hmm. I mean that's the best way to manage people is obviously communications so we offer this communication channel where call center operators are able to communicate with our vehicle team and we offer this one touch messaging so a question is asked a yes or no or an okay reply or if a specific command is needed they give them a keyboard facility where they're able to write on a keyboard exactly what they need to say Cool. So what our system also, the whole system encompass is, is the fact that we have um, these servers, these departmental servers. Mm -hmm. These servers per region, now by region I mean a province, mm. all right, is divided into four, okay, and you've got an, or like the north, the south, the east and the west. Now the west has a bunch of cities. Now those departmental servers are in those cities, okay, in each like the fire department or the police department or the ambulance service, and those servers connect to each other. So what Ross and myself were able to do, we intelligently wrote a piece of code that 
spawns, new instances in case one fails. So it's failure detection and recovery. Excellent. So within 40 seconds or so, the whole system reconfigures itself and you're able to connect again back to the server without even knowing it went down. Fantastic. All the synchronized data comes from the CSA providers. Uh -huh. So we worked very, very hard to remove the single point of failure in the whole system. Excellent. And that was our key focus. Excellent. Now, of course, the dispatcher has some central hub somewhere by knowing where the vehicles are at all times, if there's an emergency, yeah. you can then say, well, they can figure out the closest one. That's right. also that's, a really nice... Yeah, that's Because uh, sort of, our servers basically, they manage the dispatch. So we, the, the call center will take the calls, uh, collect all the relevant information, send it to the server, then the server collects all the information about all the vehicles, which they got from the GPS that's on the vehicle themselves. And then we basically get all this together, say which one's the closest, which one is the correct vehicle for the job, so we specify which one we need, and then it'll dispatch them accordingly. Uh, and again, so uh, it manages breakdown, so say an, uh, an ambulance on the way breaks down and they hit a button and it basically takes it out of the dispatching process and then it will reconfigure itself And then again. they can get some help, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the call centers now, how they work is that you don't sure. need to have one. It's designed so you can have as many as possible. So what happens is if a, an emergency has already been attended to, it's already on this man's screen. So it's, the whole system is constantly in communication with these servers so they know exactly what's going on at all times. We have a graphical map where you are able to see exactly the position of all your servers, mm. the position of all your vehicles, the position of all your emergencies. So constantly on a large scale map, you are able to see with tooltip facility, you just move a mouse over it and you see exactly the details. If is, has a vehicle accepted the emergency? Is a vehicle on the route to the emergency? Has it now gone from the emergency scene and routed to the hospital? Wow. I mean, they are able to live track, not just request the location, they are able yeah. to live track. So you can actually physically see it moving towards the emergency itself. Beautiful. So people, another person phones in and they say, listen, yeah, there's, emerg uh, there's a fire at this house and the all sense guys picks it up, takes the details and says, oh, it's already, yeah. And he goes, okay, life check those vehicles. And he says, oh, okay, the vehicle will be there within two minutes. So now you mentioned, so there's a difference, of course, between a, a fire engine and an ambulance. So yes. you're, you're typing the vehicles, obviously. Yes. yes. Yes, we have, yeah, we're typing the vehicles. We call it resources. Okay. We've given it a name, resources. So each resource has a depicted of a picture. Mm -hmm. So we've defined symbols, like a triangle is an emergency, an upside down triangle is a fire, or, and an octagon is Which like an ambulance, so it's yeah. user specified. They can decide, Excellent. and depending on their status, whether they're online or offline or busy, mm -hmm. changes those colors mm -hmm. all the time. So we've given resources shapes, basically, sure. visual shapes, so they will know exactly, just by looking at a huge board, what is happening okay. in their system, in the country, in a province, in a specific city, all Excellent. at the same time. And you've also designated the difference between a return and an approach, in the yeah. sense that it's on a way to emergency, emergency. it's on its way, way back, back to the hospital. Yes. GPS location, as soon sure. as an emergency vehicle reaches its destination, it's automatically marked as accomplished and on the scene. So once they are out of their vehicle, all they've got to get back is mark it off as completed or request additional assistance. By that means, that means that that call is attended to. They will then be uh, no longer tracked on the way back to the home base, but if another emergency comes in, that vehicle will show up as a r available to accommodate another emergency. If they are then the closest one, they will be rerouted automatically to the next emergency, which is closest to them. The whole system has uh, an intelligence built into it, so if an emergency comes in, all right, it's okay, just bear with me. Here. If an emergency comes in and a vehicle has already been assigned an emergency, now, an emergency is given a priority, a high, medium, or low. So if, say now, the emergency has a low priority that this man is on his way to, okay, and a new emergency comes in with a higher priority, and he is the closest, mm -hmm. he gets rerouted to the new emergency, and the second closest gets rerouted to the next. Beautiful. So we are able to do that whole intelligence of the whole uh, routing process. Yeah. So getting people the right services at the right time. Cool. I mean, and clearly... You know, this this is health related, but you, you built a framework that could be also used for taxis, any for limousine service, that's for anything. It. Yeah, Ross can also. That's really excellent. Well, because yeah, yeah, we want to do sort of fleet management in a general sense, yeah. right? And then we can extend basically by adding components onto it. We can say, okay, now this can be used for emergency management, which is what we've done. Sure. Um, we can do. You know, task management, like you said, with the taxis or the, the trucks or the fleet, the, the you know, uh, fleet management. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we created a product called XCMS. 
So that's basically variable control and monitoring system. And what we're presenting here is ERCMS, which the ER section is basically plugged into our XCMS. So now we've got emergency response control and monitoring system. Fantastic. So we have this, we have this complete platform to add in any additional components that we want, drag and drop, things like that, where we will add. The problem, another problem in South Africa is cash in transit heists. You can put these in cash in transit vans, constantly knowing where your vans are. Absolutely. Live camera feeds through the GPRS, through the 3G, proper live streams. You can exactly see who's in your vehicles, what they did, when they did it, for auditing purposes, you know, things like that. I mean, I don't think we've explained the whole website as well. Sure. We have a complete website, which we are able to administrate the whole system. Mm -hmm. That is used to manage all the data in the system and a user's personal details. Fantastic. From there, you're also able to connect to those servers and live track vehicles through the website, send instant messaging all through the website all at the same time. Great. Well, uh, I, I'm running out of this tape, but uh, this is great to talk to you guys. Thank you. This is a fantastic project. Best of luck to you. Thank you very and much. Either way, I mean, you've built some really fantastic software. It's going to be helpful for your entire country. Which is Thank you very much. Pretty amazing. Thanks. Thank you great for your time. You. Thank, Thank you. you.